OK, welcome to the uh, first video on our radioactivity module. It's in Year 13 on the AQA A-level syllabus. We're going to look at general ideas such as how big is the nucleus, how was the nucleus discovered, uh, what was the history that led to the current theories about the structure of the atom, including the nucleus, and most importantly, who was Rutherford uh, and what was uh, Rutherford's famous scattering experiment. So some history, uh, this whole video really is about the history behind this. So some quick history first. Towards the end of the 19th century, that the big question really was was in science was how small is small so if you take a piece of material and you chop it in half and then in half again and in half again and you keep going how many times can you chop it in half uh, was the big question do you get to something which eventually is indivisible uh, and this this sort of plague science for for a few years and some of the 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 the, the discoveries that went along the way to solving this uh, was the discovery of the electron first it was called the cathode ray particle which you may have heard of. Uh, you may have heard it being called that cathode ray tubes with the old style televisions. JJ uh, J. Thompson did a lot of work on the electron. He calculated the specific charge of the electron, which is the charge over the, uh, the charge mass. Uh, charge over the mass in terms of the ratio of charge to mass. Uh, Millikan took this information and using this famous experiment with an oil drop managed to work out the charge on, on electrons and worked out that it was an, a, a specific m an amount, uh, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And all of this led to J.J. Thompson's plum pudding model being generally accepted. Now, the, the Thompson's plum pudding model was, in principle, that matter is made of a positive material and interspersed through this because they knew about the electrons they assumed that the electrons were just embedded in this material generally throughout meaning that the whole material should be overall electrically neutral so if we just go to a little animation we've got this is a this is the the classic FET uh, animation on Rutherford scattering and the plum pudding model so this would be the plum pudding model here and all the red stuff is just a generally positively charged material that matter's made of and the electrons are the blue bits scattered throughout now what was proposed Rutherford proposed that if uh, if he fired what, what they were calling at the time alpha particles, if they fired alpha particles through this material the alpha particles are moving fast enough and are bulky enough to effectively punch straight the way through the material and the material in question they used was gold and they made it very 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 thin, gold you can roll it very thin so that they made it literally a few hundreds of, a few hundred of atoms thick uh, so it was very very fine material, they knew the alpha particles particles were relatively bulky and fast moving so they thought they would just be able to go straight the way through. Now when when they did this they didn't get the results that they were expected. They were expected to see evidence of the alpha particles going straight the way through but they didn't. In, in this animation we can swap it to the Rutherford's atom and this is what they found out from a, a very general level. If here we've got a representation of, of a, a nucleus and if we just fire alpha particles through you can see that these alpha particles instead of going straight the way through the material they were uh, backscattered, they were repelled, they were repelled through small angles and large angles and if we swap this animation here to go to more of a, a, an outward view uh, so now the little tiny purple dots are the alpha particles going through and the small yellow dots on the screen uh, would be the representation of the, the nuclear model with obviously these being the orbit of the electrons you can see that some of the particles go straight the way through uh, some of them quite a few of them are deflected slightly and the odd one is are deflected through large angles there's one there just gone back this one seems to have been deflected from somewhere so there's there's quite uh, quite a few of them go through most go through some are deflected through small angles and a few are deflected through through very large angles and these these are the results that you need to know about now this totally changed the idea from the plum pudding the plum pudding remember the prediction was they're all going to go straight the way through that didn't happen in Rutherford's atom uh, what happened was that some were repelled significantly, a few were repelled significantly, some were repelled slightly, and uh, uh, most went through, but this wasn't the case. And, and the ones that didn't go through had to be explained. Uh, if we just go back into this, uh, Rutherford did a lot of maths, and he worked out that this, this interaction here wasn't a collision. They looked at the paths, they looked at the angles they came off at, and it wasn't like a standard snooker ball, billiard ball collision. It was a repulsion going on, so they, they knew that there must be a repelling of the positively charged alpha particles which they knew were positive at this point. Okay so that's an animation of the results. Uh, this is the, 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 the classic kind of 
things that you need to think about is uh, why initially in terms of the exam why would all the alpha particles have the same kinetic energy why should the container be a vacuum why should the gold leaf be as thin as possible so obviously the alpha particles need to have the same kinetic energy so that the deflections that occur or the repulsions and change of paths that occur can be analyzed knowing that the initial energy was the same the container needs to be a vacuum so the alpha particles do not interact with anything else other than the gold foil. Why should the gold leaf be as thin as possible? Obviously we need them when the the alpha particles are going through. We'd like them to have as few interactions as possible as they go through so the less atoms it is thick the more chance you've got of having uh, having less interactions. Uh, and really, you've got to know, uh, if I just flick onto the next screen, I'll come back to it. This is the classic hand-drawn screen that you'd have, where some alpha particles are scattered through very large angles, 1 in 10,000. Some are scattered slightly, about 1 in 2,000, but most pass straight the way through. Okay, and the general idea is that, how does this experiment show that most of the atom is empty space? Well, most of the atom is empty space because most of them pass straight the way through. Then we would say, uh, most of the atom's mass is concentrated in the centre. How do we know that? Well, there are, there are very few the alpha particles that do get deflected, there's very few of them. So we, we must have here that the, there's got to be a strong effect going on in very small parts of the gold foil. So therefore we must know that most of the atom's mass is concentrated in the centre. And the simple one really, how did we know that the nucleus is positively charged? Well, because the alpha particles were positive, they were being deflected. So therefore the thing that was deflecting them or repelling them was obviously positive. So make sure you know a little bit of the history of, of who Rutherford was and also what, he, what his experiment showed in terms of sh uh, providing new evidence that the plum plodding model was incorrect. Uh, the specification just suggests that you need to know a little bit more history. That This is Niels Bohr, uh, very, very basic. N Niels Bohr thought about the idea of negative electrons and he thought if they're moving around a positive nucleus, like how would they be moving? They must be going in some kind of orbits, potentially what distance they were, how fast they were going, and he, he considered motions of planets it's around the sun if they're at any distance as long as they were going fast enough this means they would have different energies uh, they'd need different energies to to keep in orbit around the the positively charged nucleus and this led him to think along the lines of if, if electrons move between orbits so from a higher orbit to a lower orbit it should release energy and this should come out as radiation and if you think from your studies from year 12 this is the the whole idea of emission spectra uh, and absorption spectra when they're moving up energy levels and depending on how far it moved it would give out different amounts of energies these would relate to the different colors of the spectrum so Niels Bohr did loads of work on this and we've covered some of that in year 12. Uh, other history there were other people involved. Uh, Rutherford is credited for discovering the nucleus and he, it was positively charged but there are other scientists that along the way did notice something that was quite interested uh, and they, they looked at hydrogen and, and they worked out that hydrogen seemed to be the smallest atom with the lowest charge on its nucleus and helium seems to be the next one up and it had twice the charge so what people were expecting was well helium should to have twice the mass of hydrogen but uh, it didn't it seemed to have about four times the mass of hydrogen and uh, there was some confusion as to where this extra mass was coming from and it was often called the case of the missing mass and this particular scientist over here a scientist called James Chadwick uh, eventually discovered the neutron in 1932 in some ways he was one of the first uh, particle physicists in, 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 in many ways and I, I believe he built the device in his shed to discover the neutron uh, and this neutron was a new, obviously a particle with no charge that added mass to the nucleus but didn't add charge to it and hence in a hydrogen as you now know hydrogen's got one proton helium's got two protons but the additional mass depending on what isotope is comes from the neutrons uh, and accepted sizes today the specification does demand that you have uh, an idea of the the sizes of the atom the typical diameter of an atom is 10 to the minus 10 meters and the typical diameter of a, nu a nucleus would be 10 to the minus 15.